this is me. I think it's apparent I need to rethink my life a little bit. What's my problem? I feel like a chihuahua that's been over-caffeinated right now. The ultimate, no other pen pal could ever top this. Are we, are we, are we? Mariam, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. This is like the ultimate friendship bonding experience. The fact that we get to experience this together is just amazing. And I will be forever grateful, but okay. <laughs> has been sitting here for several hours i have never been so intimidated by a book before <laughs> let us discuss theories first shall we some of these i hope they don't come true i just want to get them out there before i start reading that way after i finish reading them i can see how much of a clown i actually am i am regardless anticipating to put on clown makeup at the end of this and i'm very much anticipating being an empty void next week whenever I finish this while everyone else is going to be celebrating I'm just going to be like so crack theories here we go number one whether we like it or not we're going to get the there was only one bed trope because now that Cordelia and James are engaged they're going to be living together the fact that the wedding is happening this early on we're definitely gonna get domestic Jordelia vibes. As much as I'm excited about it, I know she's gonna twist it and make it into a painful experience for me regardless. The vibes that I got from Chain of Gold, at least the end, I was get very much getting a love triangle situation between um, James, Cordelia, and Matthew, especially when James is under the influence of the first Graceler. I feel like we're gonna get a lot more of that love triangle dynamic in this book. In his mind, under the influence that this is all just a ruse whereas it's not the same for Cordelia and then I feel like because of that Matthew might act on his feelings what feelings there may be for Cordelia he might start acting on them so I feel like it's gonna be like a situation sort of like at the end of Lady Midnight when Emma and Mark were like fake dating and I feel like that's going to be very much a thing here at the end of Chain of Gold as well. We get Lucy and Grace, we get an interaction with them with Jesse, And I have a feeling that that's going to play a major role in Chain of Iron. So I think Lucy and Grace are going to have like common interests in regards to Jesse, And I think that's going to play some sort of misconstruing role in this book with the whole Gracelet situation. But then the whole Jesse situation, so Lucy's sort of like caught in the middle. I feel like Thomas and Alistair are going to be a thing. I hope that we get more Anna and Ariadne content in here. I absolutely was living for them, for the, like the few morsels that we got at the end of Chain of Gold. If you didn't know this about me, I am half Persian and I can speak Farsi, so that was one of the major things that I absolutely adored about Chain of Gold, was seeing Farsi on the page and being able to understand what, they were, what the characters were saying, especially the parts that weren't translated. I am absolutely terrified that this is one of my crack theories that's going to come true. James did say in Chain of Gold that he wants to learn more Farsi, and I feel like because they're going to have to come up with this ruse, <sighs> this pains me so much to say, that they have, because they have to like play it off to, to Cordelia's family, so I feel like James is going to learn more Farsi, like he's going to act upon that promise or that intention. I have a feeling Cordelia's gonna teach him Farsi and that's gonna be their code language. And if that happens, my soul will absolutely leave my body. I will not, I will be broken. I will be obliterated. I will be an empty shell of a person at the end of this book. Another part of my theory I forgot, I think the Jack the Ripper person at the very beginning in the prologue, I feel like that's Belial in his new human form. Don't ask me why, there's one line that made me think 
for some odd reason again this is a crack theory that it's one of the shadow hunters that had died i honestly feel like this is gonna be the book that destroys me wish me luck <laughs> So I'm literally only like 10 pages in. Lucy and Grace are having their interaction on their necromantic adventures. And Lucy says, you mean necromancy, taking power from the dead and using it to work magic on the dead. And Grace says, some would consider that kind of magic evil, but I call it necessary. And then um, Lucy says, well, I would call it evil and I don't want to do evil things. And then Grace replies, what we have to do is not altogether good, not the way most people think of good at any rate, but you already knew that, Lucy, so you can stop pretending to be so much better than me. And I honestly think that this is just setting up Lucy's path down the morally gray train <laughs> that she's really going to be like stuck in between two rocks, between Grace and Jordelia, juggling between what's right and feeling included or feeling important so this is really interesting and i'm scared for her but also really interested and intrigued are you free why did grace need to be invited grace should not be here get away from my serotonin what little serotonin i have oh, truly I hate it here. Oh my god, this is so painful. Everything about her, the way she looked, the clear sound of her voice, her small wrist under his grasp went through him like a knife. Tell me how is that desirable? <laughs> I need to read this out loud to face this trauma. Little James looked at Matthew. Jem! <laughs> Matthew nodded. Her parents asked him if he could play. He's outside in the courtyard. He couldn't come in and silent brothers had no place at weddings. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm not sure that's true, James murmured, but he recognized it for what it was. A gift from the man who had always been like an uncle to him. The music rose as exquisite as Cordelia, as pure and proud as the look on her face as she stepped up to join him at the altar. James Morgan Henry Herondale, hast thou gone among the streets of the city and the watchmen there and found the one thy soul loved? Cordelia Catayun Carstairs, hast thou gone among the streets of the city and watchmen there and found the one thy soul loves? Cordelia hesitated. James's hands were firm and gentle on hers. She knew he would always be this way, gentle and determined, kind and thoughtful. Her heart beat hard and treacherous inside her chest. He had not been gentle in the whispering room. <laughs> Delete me from existence. He would not walk away at the end of this year unscathed. She was agreeing to have her heart broken. <laughs> uh, uh. I am glitching. I am glitching. I am not emotionally stable right now. How am I supposed to get through this much? Like... I'm already losing it with this much. How am I supposed to get through this much? I'm just gonna be an empty shell of a person. So this is the part when Cordelia and James are about to go to their house and be all domestic. Alistair touched Cordelia's cheek and he says, Agar un botol mehrabun nabur, bargar khune va mutmain bash, man kari mikonam ke az galat kardan khodesh pashimun beshe. Which is basically like, if he does anything to hurt you in any way he can catch these hands <laughs> james really decorated their house with persian miniatures james decorated their house with persian antiques and furniture to make cordelia feel more at home and the fact that every single thing listed i also have in my house cassandra claire really peeping through my windows <laughs> We could play a game of chess. The lady of the house requests a game. She demands one. The first move goes to the lady of the house. He said sinking onto the sofa beside Cordelia. Sir, I watched Queen's Gambit. Since when do opponents sit next to each other when playing chess? We 
we do, but not the circumstances. <laughs> nope. Ugh. <laughs> well, she had to do this now, right now, or she would lose her nerve. She raised her hand and knocked on James's door. <laughs> she bold, bold. Uh -huh. okay. she bold. What's she do? James made a funny sort of sound, probably stunned by the sheer number of buttons on the dress. Just start at the top, she said, and if you need to tear the fabric a bit, it's all right. I won't be wearing this again. <laughs> And you said it's giving fan fiction very much, very much so. <laughs> like... I got to around um, page 186 last night, and I'm about this far now. I read like 10 pages this morning. And I had to stop because I knew I was getting to a point where I needed to read uninterrupted. It's very much not mentally okay when I, what I was reading last night. I needed emotional support in any sense of the word, so Mariam had to hold my hand as I got through like two chapters last night. <laughs> Things are too happy right now. I am very much suspicious because it was like reading fan fiction in the best way possible because Cassie was giving us all the tropes that we were hoping we would get in this book, but they were so happy. How are we almost 200 pages in and it's just pure happiness? Like something bad's about to happen and i my trust issues with books is just not letting me fully enjoy the happy content we're getting even though i know i should be enjoying it while we're getting happy content there's like an underlying suspicion in the back of my subconscious while reading what i did read last night lucy and jesse had their domestic argument about her feelings which her feelings are very valid i think she just didn't go about them the right way also, so the whole Jack the Ripper situation, I am still convinced that it's the human vessel of Belial, but I don't know who it is. And the fact that now it's been confirmed that James can sort of connect to the subconscious of Jack the Ripper, like as the killings are happening, I feel like that further confirms that it's Belial just because he and James having that familial connection, that's what's connecting them subconsciously. So that further confirms that theory for me in that sense, but I don't know what person he's posing as. It, the second killing just happened and it says that the killer like absorbed the rune. And I was like, I'm scared, but also I'm intrigued. And that's when I knew I was like, okay, it's time to go to bed because I cannot, I'm gonna have nightmares about this. I was living for the absolute sass that Alistair has been serving with the Farsi he's been saying lately. I love Alistair so much more in this book so far. So we were very much fed with Ariadne and Anna's brief interaction. I'm just keeping my eye on Matthew in regards to the whole love triangle situation. The reason why it's taking me a while is because with this book, I need to read when I'm uninterrupted. And during the day, like, after work, I have to do different stuff. And so I'm like, I cannot read this book until I know I'm done for the day, that I'm not going to be interrupted. So I can just fully immerse myself in the pain and just process or attempt to process this traumatic experience. Yesterday was a lot. 75% of the reading I did do yesterday was just me processing what I did read. 25% was actual reading, 75% was just processing what happened. James and Cordelia, when they play chess, that scene, that whole entire scene was just everything. And when James gave Cordelia a two week anniversary gift and he gave her the necklace and said, this is so I can give you the whole world, I lost my damn mind. All of their interactions, like that whole entire chapter, scene, whatever, just proves to me that the bracelet doesn't have a hold on him until he thinks about, until he acknowledges the bracelet. Because all of his behavior is just natural, like the natural behavior he would have with Cordelia, until he remembers that he has a bracelet and it just completely wipes any of that behavior away. I'm just, <laughs> I hate it here. my ass right now <laughs> who talk is this i can't 
James looked from Alistair to Elias. Not much showed in his face. In that moment, Cordelia was grateful for the mask. Then he smiled. That smile that lit up his face transformed it into something luminous. He inclined his head to Sona. Truly, he said, Truly, you must be proud to have two such heroes in your family. Cordelia gaped. She had no idea James knew any Persian beyond a few words for food, thank you, and goodbye. It was a wedding surprise for Cordelia. <laughs> I'm about to lose my mind. Cassandra Clare, you have broken me. Right now, I'm at the point where I'm just experiencing things and the book's just hurting me and I'm letting it. So that's how things are going right now. I'm scared. <laughs> I feel like the more James is getting like comfortable with Cordelia, like the more that he's allowing to be himself around her, the more the repercussions he's facing get worse. Like it's getting to the point of him losing his memories too. Oh, I'm so scared. But I absolutely love the fact that Cordelia is not at all letting anything happen to her. Like, she's going down with a fight. And she says, The story of Layla and Majnoon, you liked that one quite a bit. We talked about it afterward. We talked a lot about it, actually, because it seemed to take your mind off how badly you felt. You really don't remember? I'm sorry, Daisy. I wish I did. There was a copy of the book upstairs, Cordelia knew, and among the volumes that had been brought from her old house. She stood up suddenly, determined. If she couldn't jog his memory, maybe Nazami would. Then there's only one thing to be done. I'm going to remind you. <laughs> yes, girl, take no one's shit. There's a crack. There's a crack in the price of fuck weight. Fuck weight. time to process what the hell I read last night. First and foremost, what we need to address is the fact that Cassandra Clare really outdid herself and said Whispering Room Chapter Who? Who is she? We don't acknowledge her after what happened last night. Like, the bed scene? Are you kidding me right now, Miss Cassandra Clare? I was shook to my cores. I was like, how is this legal, Miss Ma'am? I was absolutely living. Let us let us establish this first. Far exceeded my expectations in the best way possible. James pulled the I Kiss Grace card. I was not expecting for Miss Cordelia Carstairs Herondale to pull the O. So you owe me something now. Since this wedding is a scam, like you have just mentioned, that means I will have a husband in the future. And I must prove to him that I, did, I experienced things during my first marriage. So, sit your ass down, boy. You're gonna give me a TED Talk presentation on how to properly kiss.
far too much. I honestly feel that I am just a human punching bag for Cassandra Clare. Like, I'm only, I've only, I got, I think, like, 57% as of last night. The fact that I truly feel as though I'm a human punching bag for her, that at first it was against my will, but with how much I've had to endure and suffer through and only being halfway, at this point, I just let her. And I'm like, I have accepted my status as your human punching bag. Do as you will. And then just the whole, the whole scene of Jesse and Lucy, of them just being domestic, as domestic as a human and a ghost can be. This is giving me too many WandaVision parallels. That's, that's too soon for this. I like them. I like the content we're being given. But I'm extremely concerned for the lengths at which Lucy will go now that her feelings are growing exponentially for Jesse and vice versa. That scene of Matthew with Cordelia, that he finally like confessed to her about why he is the way he is. And then she hugged him and then he said her name and then let and then just rested his head on her shoulder matthew is my baby matthew i love him so much and if cassandra claire does anything to him anything to any of these characters honestly but if she does anything to him that poor baby deserves all the happiness all he has known his whole life is pain because he has been torturing himself on the inside and he just he needed that hug so much. I just, in that moment, I was like inserting myself as Cordelia. At, at this point, I just self-insert myself as Cordelia at this point throughout the whole book. I should know by now. After reading Cassandra Clare's books for essentially 10 years at this point, that she's only giving us all the food and feeding us so well just to prepare for how much pain we're about to endure. Anyway, besides the point, she's really feeding us well with all these ships. Like, Ariadne and Anna? I was living for every second. I... Enough said. I want to be a fly on the wall in the Whispering Room because the Whispering Room has seen some things and has seen many a ship come to fruition apparently oh to be a fly on the wall in the whispering room the tea would be piping i would never have a single bored moment also so elias's murder i wish i felt bad i feel bad that i didn't feel bad like i was very much like alistair that we're like oop one last bitch to worry about <laughs> this is how much i have left i'm terrified it can only go downhill from here Crack theory time. Stick with me. Bridgestock glared at him with such pure hatred that James was taken aback. Hold that thought. What is the one detail that James keeps recalling about Belial and the murderer whenever he is seeing stuff in his dreams? How much hatred he feels. And the fact that in the very beginning, it says soon he would be strong enough to take on his true enemies. As he turned to leave the alley, he whispered their names under his breath. James Herondale, Cordelia Carstairs. So that would be enough grounds to guess that the Inquisitor is probably the one being possessed by Belial, but... The only thing that does not make sense for that to be true is what Lillian had said to Thomas when she was dying. She said, he did, she whispered, but he was dead, dead in his prime. His wife, she wept and wept. I remember her tears. The only reason why it doesn't make sense for it to be Inquisitor is because the Inquisitor never really, never died. Like he's been alive this whole time. So it's insinuated like my initial thought, the body of someone that was killed is probably being used as a vessel. <gasps> Wait, what if, <gasps> what if it's Tatiana's husband? The argument could be made that it's Jesse, but then that doesn't make sense because it says his wife and he was never married. So like it would make sense of the she wept and wept 
but it's insinuating that it was his it was the wife not the mom so now my in inkling is that they're you he's using tatiana blackthorne's husband's body but then if that if he was able to be brought back to life then she would have been able to bring jesse back to life because she would have done it for her husband at the end of chain of gold he didn't need a body like he just made himself look like someone it could be said that he's just making himself look like Tatiana Blackthorne's husband, but in the very beginning, it's insinuating that he had taken on a human form, so that wouldn't make sense. So I don't know. I'm now leaning towards it being Tatiana Blackthorne's husband, but the, the details are a bit iffy, but that's my inclination right now. So we'll see how much of a clown I am later. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I am! I'm nervous! <laughs> Well, I tried. I thought of this house, this study, tried to picture every piece of it. Nothing worked. I might as well have been trapped in quicksand. He set the cellar down. Until I thought of you! Of me! Cordelia said a little blankly. I thought of you! He said again. It was as if you were there with me. Ah! I saw your face, your hair, and I was no longer afraid. I knew I would be able to come home because of you, that you would lead me back. You are my constant star, Daisy. Please have that line tattooed on my forehead. She's really trying to break me right now. Are you kidding me? I cannot with this roller coaster of emotions right now. I was waiting for this one, but I'm so angry. I'm going through too many emotions right now. The damn bracelet, the bracelet finally broke. And what happens? James knocks out, flip the page. A grace chapter! I hate it here, I hate it here. <laughs> we ready? <laughs> Do you see this? Oh my god. <laughs> We're insane. <laughs> okay, let me attempt to explain this. Anything that's blue after the green starts, that's what I okay. added, so... Oh, okay. I want to be happy, but I'm just in pain when James is like so open with his emotions now towards Cordelia in the sense that like mm -hmm. he's acknowledging it. I'm like, no, this is not a good sign. And then the fact that he keeps saying tomorrow, some shit's about to happen that he can't say something tomorrow. I said the fact that it keeps getting repeated, I don't like this. Before you go into it, let's just talk about that fucking scene. Which one though? You're gonna have to clarify. <laughs> Oh, yeah! Agnes brought James into the realm, and then Magnus disappears, and so James was stuck there, and then Cortana came, Ooh, and, then, and then said, he is mine! Wait, 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 I think I tabbed it. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I remember they were getting it on, and I started, I started recording myself because I was like, wait a minute. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I only want to know one thing. Did you mean it what you said? Mean what? What you said in the shadow realm that I was yours. I was like, Cordelia, you better not take the high road right now. You better tell him. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't matter what I said. I wanted him to leave you alone. I don't believe you. You don't say things you don't mean, Daisy. Fine, I meant it then. You belong to me and not to him. You will never belong to him. Mm. <laughs> And then flip page. <laughs> Daisy, my Daisy. No, no. And then the fact that he literally said KO. He passed the fuck. I swear out. I said. I was like, are we kidding? And we flip the page to a Grace chapter. We can't take a break in this she house. She's wrong for that. She's so She's wrong. so wrong for that. Miss Lucy. 
Okay, let's talk about Lucy. I <laughs> you saw her like she was protecting Jesse's body and everything. That pissed me off. It pissed me off very me much. Off. I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> she was like, no, Daisy, I know you won't hurt me. We can't hurt him. I was like, get the fuck out of the way. You're like, get out of the way, bro. Wasn't this in daytime too? Yes. Girl, you know he's not awake during daytime Wait. like i don't even blame jesse i just blame no. lucy Luce, oh my god like she like progressively throughout the story she has just been like unhinged I felt, I, like i felt <laughs> like she was really becoming unhinged and she was starting to care and less about family and care more about jesse it was like really becoming obsessed with bringing him back and like First of all, let's talk about how Lucy and fucking Grace are the reason that the dark artifices exist. What I was so mad about, I was like, how did I not pick up on this when Cassie was like laying out all the clues for Lilith? The only, the only clue that I remember was in the very, very beginning when they go to the Hell Ruel and they're like, oh yeah, it's like a celebration for Lilith with the owls. Yep. I was yep. like, you mean to tell me I remember that, but I didn't pick up on the stone? <laughs> So Cordelia and Matthew and their little um their expedition. Their expedition and then they're like heart to heart. That's what I wanted to say. That was so oh wow. When like, he finally. rested his head on her shoulder, I was I yeah. was done. The moment after that, when Alistair and he was like Cordelia made me give you a second chance, make her make it worthy of her. Oh no, I just realized I'm beyond the point of your tabs. What was my last tab? I'm gonna see. I had tabbed right before that. James wanted to ask Matthew to tell him more. What mistakes have you made, Math, that you cannot forgive yourself for? What is it that you are drowning in bottles and glasses and silver flasks? Now that I can see you clearly, because of that stupid bracelet being gone. Now that oh, I can God. see you clearly, I see you're unhappy. But why? When you are more loved and loving than anyone else I know. And then you put, nor have I known you to make such grave mistakes as you say, say J said James. But if you did, you know that I would do all I could to help you fix them. Oh. <laughs> Bitch, at this point, I'm going to get Daisy my Daisy fucking tattoo. <laughs> It's the trauma, love. It's the trauma. Stop, 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 stop. No, 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 no. God, why are men so stupid? <laughs> ah! What's happening? Why? Mm -hmm. Miss Grace always... <laughs> mm -hmm. Chapter 28, No Wise Man. Facts. <laughs> uh, I'm about to get a headache. I'm over this shit. <laughs> ah! Like, my heart is, like, beating out of my chest right now. Not in a good way. How many pages do I have? 40 pages. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bro, Chain of Gold was child's play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Her smile vanished. <laughs> As it should. Gone was the need for her so strong it felt like an illness. Gone was the sense of shock and amazement he felt at the sight of her. And it's pleased with something else of rising anger. Yo. Per bestie. I love this song. What's happening? Okay. He could hear the bitterness in his voice. I remembered how when you took the bracelet off me four months ago, I felt as though a fog had been lifted from my that's brain. The, that's the bitterness. I could think again. I've only been half alive since I was 14. You could not just have... What? You have not just made me think that I loved you. You have subsumed my will over and over and over until I no longer know who I am. Do you even understand what it is that you've done to me? You want me to say I will atone, Grace said in an oddly flat voice. It does not matter, I suppose. I will do what I am told, save one thing. I came here to beg you for help because I can no longer bear to do my mother's bidding. Yet you still pretended till you loved me when you did and expected me to love you, said James. You did not ask for my help. You expected it to be compelled. Why should I believe anything you say? 
Grace put her so head. Good. A few minutes later. So, what line did you just read? <laughs> no, I'm about to cry right now. <laughs> it's literally physically paining me to read each each line. Mm hmm. ball my eyes out i thought i had misjudged him so i told myself to stop stop what hoping i suppose that you would see that <laughs> no 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 and the way the way i tabbed what he had said before I have not read on. I'm just staring. Take your time. It's a lot. <laughs> you look like your soul has left you. <laughs> I legit feel like I'm about to have like some hyperventilation panic attack right now. Yeah. He deserves so much. Yeah. He deserves everything. The world. <laughs> that you might, if anything were to happen to me, you would remember I love to stop. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> I have chills. I have chills. That you might, if anything were to happen to me, you would remember I loved you desperately. And if for some reason at the end of the year you and James divorce at... <laughs> not always a lightning bolt is it sometimes it's a creeping vine it grows slowly until suddenly it is all there that there is in the world i don't know what to say stop i would i suppose i should be pleased to have been a good actor perhaps when inevitably i am tossed out of the clay for some future misdeed i will find a new success upon the stage i'm gonna go get some tissue <laughs> This is fucking pathetic. <laughs> the way. No, 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 no. Oh no 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 no. What did you see? The ladder. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> mm
be better. You know when you like your body locks up? Yes. Oh my God. I'm hurting. Uh-huh. Like I'm physically hurting. Yeah. I, I feel like I just went through a breakup. Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely insane love. <laughs> so if you've gotten to this point, congratulations. You deserve a reward just for that. As you can tell by the timestamp, it's been a good week since I finished Chain of Iron. And that's simply because for the entire week after finishing this, I was physically, mentally, and emotionally incapable of forming a coherent thought about what I experienced in these 700 plus pages and any time I attempted to come up with a coherent thought or form words to describe my thoughts on this, my brain would do the equivalent of Google shutting down all of your open tabs. I simply would was just living in fight or flight mode 24-7 for the seven days following finishing this and I would have my work playlist playing at work and anytime a song would come up that remotely represented something that occurred here, my brain shut down. I dissociated completely and I just no, looking back, that was probably my brain's response to trauma. <laughs> I even chopped my hair since then, which is the telltale sign of recovering from a mental breakdown. So I would say that that's pretty accurate of what I went through reading the release day. So essentially 24 hours after finishing this book, because I finished this at like 1 or 2 a.m. March 1st, which doesn't really count in my head. I uploaded my Cordelia cosplay onto Twitter and I did not expect for Cassandra Clara to see it. Not only did she see it, she acknowledged my existence by quote tweeting it as you saw in the previous clip and I still cannot believe that happened. I'm still in disbelief but I take that as like reparations for the emotional trauma and abuse I went through so I feel like that was justified after posting that the following day so a day after this came out I posted a Farsi translation guide and like a Persian guide onto my blog so if you haven't seen it I'll put a link down below essentially because this series meant so much to me that was like my way of giving back i just want to make it a more inclusive reading experience for everyone especially for those that aren't familiar with the persian culture and as well as those who don't speak farsi naturally but now like i said it's been a week now that i've mostly keyword mostly cleared my head of like the mental fog that I was in and recovered as much as one can after finishing Chain of Iron. I will say that this confirmed that The Last Hours is the best series Cassandra Clare has written to this day. I held The Infernal Devices and The Dark Artifices to such a high standard that when these two books came along especially this book. This book, I felt like Last Hours was like the best one when I read Chain of Gold. Now that I finished this book, I can wholeheartedly say that The Last Hours is her best work yet. Through 700 pages, so much happened, but it wasn't overwhelming and it didn't feel rushed in any way, which was a huge plus for me because I feel like, especially with thick books, sometimes the authors will try to get too much done and it will seem very cluttered but that was not the case with this i feel like so much happened yet 
there was enough time to process what had happened so it's not like everything was happening one after another it was very well paced which i think that's the main reason why i didn't feel rushed because the pacing was really good i poured everything that i needed to say about this book into the vlog but now looking forward i am absolutely terrified of what's gonna happen in chain of thorns the last book in the last hours trilogy i am terrified i know we'll get a somewhat happy ending at the end of all this but the hell that we have to go through to get to that point i don't even want to think about it's gonna be earth shattering i cannot believe that we have to wait a whole year until we can get answers but at the same time i'm not ready for this trilogy to end because it's so near and dear to my heart that i don't think i'll ever be ready to say goodbye to these characters and to the series but i feel as though it's like a give or take that i don't want to say goodbye but also i need answers so it'll keep me on my toes until next year the publication date better not be moved miss cassandra claire because waiting longer than a year is unacceptable so chain of thorns we're gonna need in like a year please thank you until the last installment of the last hours trilogy comes out will be the version of no face that devours any books with any semblance of happiness to help me to recover until then so that's it from me like i said i poured everything every ounce of feeling and thoughts that i had about this book in the vlog so I don't really have much else to add but if you read this let me know and until next time i'll see you later